Hey guys and welcome to Medieval 2 Total War Kingdoms. Well this is actually just a preview video for it because I've been doing Medieval 2 Total War for a while now. I'm not really finished the campaign although right now I've got uh, 12 videos actually lined up. I just had a massive session where I recorded 12 videos which is like, that was like 3 out of, uh, it's not 3 hours, it's 5 hours long. So yeah I've recorded quite a lot of that. And, yeah, I'll be trying to upload that um, fairly soon. But I just wanted to take a preview of the Kingdoms expansion. Now, the Kingdoms expansion comes with four ki sort of mini-campaigns. It's not a big, huge campaign like before. Here's the Americas campaign, the first one. Well, alphabetically. Last one chrono chronologically, actually. So, the problem with this one is the map kind of sucks. So I, for this one only I'll go into the game and uh, toggle the fog of war cheat thingy. So we got New Spain who have a lot of good units, you know it says they've got <laughs> good units everywhere but there's not many of them and I'll admit I haven't played the Americas as much but I'm gonna try and play all of the four uh, kingdoms like, campaigns, maybe not on long, actually probably on long for each of them but I will just stop after I do what it says the Aztec Empire is quite a big place actually and I've noticed these tribes are basically the same there's there's very differences you can read them here so the Aztec Empire the Mayans I forget where they are actually oh I'll go and see quickly yeah see there's a little difference there if you read it but like I said I've not played this one very much so you know I haven't played the Kingdoms expansion very much in general so I wanted to play it obviously because I've had it for so long and just haven't really played it the Apache tribes the Chichimec tribes or whatever Chichimeca I don't know the Tlaxcalans I'm pretty sure it's Tlaxcalan or Tlaxcala or Something like that. They have one region, <laughs> Tlaxcala, <laughs> when they start in the Tarascans, which have two regions. So I'm just gonna go pff, Apache and tribes and then just like skip the intro. I'll play that when uh, obviously I do these videos, but I just wanted to give a little oversight. And here you can bring up the console, you do it by hitting the well, it's like an apostrophe. It's beside the semicolon on my um, keyboard, and that's the cheat for it. Toggle underscore FOV, which is fog of war. FOV, I said. FOW, <laughs> I meant. Yeah, so here we are. Uh, don't worry about those lines. That always happens when you do enable that cheat. It's because, you know. So we basically have a lot of rebel places uh, on this map, and so the Apacheans start there. There's the Chichimec tribes. There's the Tarascans. The Aztec Empire has a lot starting it. Spanish get one city over here and one over there. Oh, Mayans are pretty interesting. They're all the way down here, which is, you know, they're they they're pretty much in the middle of nowhere. And the Tlaxcalans are over here. So yeah, I just wanted to show you where they are, and I'll move on to the next campaign now. Okay guys, this is the Britannia campaign, and nice picture of William Wallace there. There are different sort of campaign rules, but I'll get into them when I go into the game. I've also got the manual here, which kind of helps me out, because I haven't, I haven't played this game as much as I probably should have. I mean, these, these mini campaigns are actually quite fun when you get to them, but, you know, I just, I never tried them really. I tried some of them, I tried this one especially. This is Britannia campaign, so you got England, and they control so much of the map when they start out, but it's, prob it's a problem keeping it in check, and I'll go into more detail once I uh, play this campaign. Uh, Wales will start with three territories, and they're kind of sandwiched in there. It's a pretty good defensive position they got, but offense is not so much, because they're against England from the start. Um, and the reason I'm doing the these videos is because... If you have any preferences on what faction I, I go, although I might just pick a faction for this one especially and the Teutonic one, 
because I feel I have an idea of who I want to go, but I'll get into that in a second. Scotland, I've already went in my main Medieval 2 Total War Let's Play, so I'm not going to pick them again. Though they are fun in this campaign. They have quite a lot of territory up there. Ireland would probably be the people I go here. You know, I've got no... I, I don't really care about the Americas campaign, who I really go, but I would, I'd like it to be Ireland if I do this. Uh, Norway's kind of difficult to go there, kind of scattered all the way around there. It's weird. I... yeah, I wouldn't really like to go with them. Well, they do get uh, reinforcements, like 10 turns in, like a full stack of army. You know. That's why being the Scots is so daunting at the start, because Norway is fucking kicking your ass. But yeah, that's the Britannia campaign. This is the Crusades campaign, and this one looks really fun, and I never really had the chance to play it, unfortunately. So, by the way, there's no unlockable factions on anything apart from the Teutonic, which I've already unlocked, and I'll get to that, obviously. So, first of all, you got the two Crusadering factions who are allied at the start. In the Kingdom of Jerusalem, which is all the, this area here, they're probably the easiest to play, I've heard, because they are, their units are fucking immense. But I haven't really heard much about them, because I haven't really played this campaign, like I've said. Princi Principality of Antioch. Hey look, Antioch got massive. I believe this is the French, uh, the Jerusalem one is the English Crusader State, and this one is the French. And you get a hero character for each uh, faction, which has a special ability, but of course I'll get into that when I start playing these. Yeah, these campaigns also like you to hold uh, places and eliminate factions. There's a Byzantine Empire. They're pretty fun. I don't know if I would like to go with them, though, because every time someone's done this, I've pretty much seen the Byzantine Empire come up a lot as their faction of choice. So, yeah, they're kind of scattered around there. Egypt is all the way down here, and the Turks are the other ones. They... I assume they basically play the same sort of role as they did in Total War, the, the you know, the normal game. Well, played the same way, I mean. I don't know if that's their unique unit, as the, sa as the same as it was before. But yeah, they've kind of got scattered lands, and I think the Turks would probably be the hardest to play, because Byzantines and pr the two Crusader states, pretty nasty. So yeah, that was the Crusades campaign. And lastly, here's the Teutonic campaign, and I'm trying to keep this under two minutes, so, yeah. Right, the two unlockable factions are the two last ones here, so I already enabled them, so. Here we've got the Teutonic Order, who are basically Crusaders. Hey, look, they're back. They're, they're the white there. They're surrounding this faction, which is the next faction I'll get into. And uh, they're pretty kick-ass from what I've seen. However, I probably already know which faction I want to go here. So here's Lithuania, which is the faction I probably want to go. Because they're pagans, and I don't know, pagans just seem fucking awesome to me. So I would probably go pa um, the pagan Lithuanians. Also, the others are kind of scattered around and not really relevant. I think the first two are the most relevant in this campaign, so I would want to go one of them, I think. Denmark have got lands scattered everywhere, and up here is Norway, that's not a playable faction, and they get extra units when they conquer all of Scandinavia, which is really cool for the for the Danes. Danes are pretty cool. Novgorod is basically Russia, and they are kind of up here and out of the way of everyone, but they can be strong, strong allies, especially for Lithuania, because, you know, they're going to have trouble with the Teutonic Order right from the start because they are pagans. Poland down here, <clears throat> I assume they work the same as they did in Medieval 2 Total War, the normal game, or played the same. And the Holy Roman Empire, which the colour scheme is really nice on them, I have to admit. Black and yellow, it's really nice. But they seem kind of out of the way in the bottom corner there, and I'm not sure I would want to go them. And these bastards over here are the Mongols, or the Golden Horde. And they're probably going to be your most annoying enemy on this map. So 
That's really because Lithuania starts so close to them as well. Lithuania is just surrounded. So, Lithuania, I think, would be a good challenge for me, but, you know, if, if you want to put in the comments what you think, I should go for some of the, you know, the campaigns when I go to finally do them, do so, you know, short, long campaigns, preferences, stuff like that, you know. I can't really think of anything else, so, yeah, that's it, guys, so... I'm going to be doing Kingdoms at some point, I probably won't start it until I'm a little further through my campaign, like I said, I'm 12 videos uh, more up to, to upload, but after that, we'll see how it goes, so see you guys.